Yeah, all right. Man, me and you are best friends. You know that? All we do is get along so far. That guy is you. I know. I know. Time travel. Exactly. Uh, all right, so... So, you hate the very odd, which is objectively true. Or at least, uh, less than admiration. Uh, Todd's got it up. Okay. So, it's piping audio to Jenny, I guess. So, you should be good to go, I think. All right. So, we're live on Altitude Radio. Uh, I don't know yet. Probably. All right. I'll check. And we're re- we're recording audio. So it's like, the most and then it's like, like all fell over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Like, there's like a thing that happens. Check this out. <laughs> Say hello to the hangout. Whatever we want. Oh, I'm shiny. There's Len. Oh, I smell. Oh. That was unrelated. Oh, really? Yeah. Sean. <laughs> Your mom is unrelated because you're a bastard. <laughs> you're a bastard. <laughs> All right. Uh, hey. Have you never seen us at Dragon Ball? Are we good to go, Todd Whitehead? We are good to go. We're recording. You are gone. That is fantastic. Uh, everyone's here for the Justin Robert Young invention. Open that, Open that next time. Right. Right. Uh, you guys ready? Yep. Let's do it. Jesse, are you ready? Len Peralt is drawing. Jonathan Strickland's ready. Veronica Belmont's drinking. Good. Okay. Here we go. Everyone pretend to be quiet. Well, Jenny doesn't know. Jenny didn't want to be in the hangout. So. Here we go. show. This is the Daily Tech News for Friday, August 29th, very late, Atlanta, Georgia, live to Hey everybody, thank hey everybody, you, uh, thank you for, for coming out, coming out on, a, on a very, very late Friday, Friday night that has a lot sexier options for you. We appreciate you choosing us. We're like that small airline that you know, all that we have is peanuts, but we really appreciate your support. At Dragon Con in Atlanta, Georgia. Jonathan Strickland is with us. Veronica Bellman is a Justin Robert Young is with us from Night Attack. And, uh, sparing no expense, Len Peralta made another way down to the here to draw the show Amazing. Thank you, Lee. Very welcome. Man. <laughs> We've made, made, made a good mic, so I had to make him say something. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. By the way, those uh, sexy yeah. options included in that section of each other. Uh, yeah. Which is fine as long as you remain here in the room and watch us as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's only wow. fair if you watch us. <laughs> 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 hey, hey, that's right. Uh, you know that new Apple wearable device that Apple hasn't actually announced and is not referenced anywhere in their September 9th invite? Well, that mythical wearable might be delayed. At least according to Rico. <laughs> That's the end of the story. That's that story. Right. Reuters, reports Reuters reports Google is developing drones that can deliver stuff to your door. Project Wayne will take several years to develop and hopes to be able to drop on frigates as small as a porch. Amazon has a similar program, and we can only surmise that Google will also come up with a video game streaming site now as well, because, you know, they do all the same stuff. Vaporware. <laughs>
The handheld consoles, simply called the new 3DS and new 3DS LL, each have a new knob added. Each added that added too much props. Each added a new <laughs> knob added them called the C stick, which will allow the player to play the game more efficiently. They'll also have two new buttons on top, the ZL and ZR buttons, as well as a built-in NFC for built-in NFC, not a NFC. I didn't write that for their upcoming line of compatible figurines. No word, however, on a U.S. release date. Veronica also has her 3DS at Dragon Con. If anyone wants to trade perfect fruit, thank you. No bad props, only bad actors. <laughs> From the country that brought Julian Assange asylum comes government crypto coinist. Ha! Tard! Crypto coins. <laughs> Told ya, it's tard! No bad words. In Gadget reports, Ecuador is creating a government backed virtual currency. AP reports the launch should come in December, though no other details are known. Ecuador's official currency is the U.S. dollar, Tribune Havens. So that would mean that their only native currency would be a digital currency. Yes. Mm. Mm. You know, text messages are so impersonal, at least according to Brand in July. That's where the someone app for iOS comes in. A message sent to you through someone won't arrive in your inbox. Instead, it will go to a person near you who also has the Someone app. They are then charged with delivering the message in person and are encouraged to add appropriate emotion as indicated by the sender. So, get ready for a lot more hugs from perfect strangers. All right, I need someone to stand next to Miranda July so I can send her a message that you deliver entitled, You, Me, and Everyone We Know is the Worst Movie Ever Made. <laughs> Shut it down. Poor Miranda. Sucks. Uh, time now for some news from you. These comes from our folks in the subreddit at dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com, starting with Captain Kipper pointing us to the Verge report that Mother Parker's Tea and Coffee says its latest real cup coffee capsules are fully compatible with the Keurig 2.0. Oh. Now, this may mean Mother Parker's defeated Keurig's coffee capsule DRM, or they may have struck a licensing deal and just not told anybody about it. In their press release, Mother Parker says, ensuring continued freedom of choice for consumers, which implies that they broke the DRM and just don't want to admit it for legal reasons. Keurig's latest machines, if you don't know, scan capsules for particular markings before allowing it to be brewed to force you to buy the coffee that they make money off of. Coffee DRM. It's coffee DRM. Worth. Mother Parker's may have broken it. May have. May have totally broken may have. it. Mother, may I, Parker? Yes, you may, may break, break your DRM. DRM. Stop it. <laughs> Captain Kipper also submitted a BBC report about an American academic who has uploaded 2.6 million historical, blissfully copyright-free images to photo-sharing site Flickr. Caleb Litaro is creating a searchable database for the images, which will total about 12 million. The pictures range from 1500 to 1922 and come from books scanned by our friends at the Internet Archive. We will, of course, have the link to the images in the show notes. There are many more cats on the Internet now. So many cats. So many more cats. Mm -hmm. Thank goodness. The BBC said that, not me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They're probably dead. Oh, poor dead cats. <laughs> oh, <laughs> hang in there. After dark. Saying, I'm just saying. Techie New posted uh, the Verge story that MSN Messenger is finally dead. Long live MSN Messenger. <laughs> Thought it was already. Well, you are obviously not Chinese. <laughs> oh, we're pouring out a little for the homies who didn't make it. Just water for MSN Messenger, though. I'm sure. Well, it is Redmond. It wasn't like it was AIM or anything. Uh, well, you're obviously not Chinese, which is really an awkward way to start a <laughs> sentence. <laughs> Microsoft announced Messenger services will, would be taken up by Skype last year, but kept MSN Messenger running in China. Not anymore, though. After October 31st, the Chinese Messenger users will need to use Skype. Bring it into 15 years of the service. We will always remember the way it used to reinstall itself in Windows 98 every time we deleted it. The Mike it'll, Myers it'll never of come back. Messenger apps. <laughs> Kyle, the self-appointed janitor of the DTNS subreddit, passes along the register report that Todd Park, the chief technology officer of the United States, is set to resign his post after presiding over such technological marvels as the U.S. healthcare rollout. Park, 
will become a special advisor to the president in Silicon Valley. The White House is looking for a replace Google's X division. My friends, is a look at the headlines. All right, uh, plug of the day goes to Alpha Geek Radio because uh, we're on it all the time, including here at DragonCon. Todd Whitehead sitting right over there, sparing uh, Hi, no Todd. expense, yeah, no lack buddy. of elbow grease to keep us streaming. Uh, so check out alphageekradio.com if, uh, if you want to be able to listen to awesome content all the time. Uh, they do great stuff, not only Daily Tech News Show, but lots of other cool stuff as well. Uh, for our discussion story, we talked a lot about like how we should approach it since we're doing a, a kind of a later in the evening episode. Uh, it's a Friday, and Fridays are, are typically a little lighter on big news. Uh, probably the Google drone thing is the biggest news right now, the fact that Google's saying, oh, we're going to compete with Amazon and all that. And got us talking uh, earlier when we were, were prepping for the show just about drones and artificial intelligence and uh, robots uh, and all of the things that we joke are going to kill us and take over our planet. And honestly, with, with Google and Amazon investigating this, with Google doing self-driving cars and that becoming a reality, uh, with all the robot stories we're talking about on Daily Tech News Show all the time, we started to, to say, okay, have we gone from this not being funny? <laughs> have we gone into this not being funny anymore? And actually uh, AI and robots and and this sort of thing, you know, being like nuclear power, uh, something that is can be used responsibly, but is dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> and that was the end of our conversation. I think, Thanks everybody for coming to Dragon Con. No. no, I mean, I, I think I think we totally we, we're at a point now where I think the question is not do we worry about it, but beyond our kind of like forward-facing predictions, like when do we actually, as human beings, begin to like really worry about it? Like, like on on a consumer level, like on a kitchen table. Like, yeah. will they destroy us? Kind of worry. Like, I'm, I don't trust them robots. All right. They killed the the Smith boy. Well, okay. So I have a lot of thoughts on Probably this. Probably when they kill the Smith boy. I have That's a lot of thoughts that. that are very muddled by alcohol right now, but I'll try to do my best. Um. So, okay. Let me get the first one. Okay. So, okay. <laughs> so it's like we're pretty far away from like actual AI, like conscious AI in robots. I think we're further away than maybe we think we are. Okay. Fair like enough. It, it feels like Because we've been getting, saying it's coming for years. Yeah. Why is today? I think we're, we, we're very close to, to artificial intelligence that's very smart and able to have a conversation with us, you know, uh, during test style. Um, and, and can mimic human reactions and, and human like conversations and things like that. But I think to actually get to a point where AI is conscious and self-aware, uh, at that point it becomes unethical to use them as robots that do things for us because then essentially we're enslaving them because we're, we're using them for our own desires and needs and we, have, we would have the ability to create kill switches and the ability to turn them off and all this ability to have this power over them. But at that point, they're essentially living, thinking things. So you have to think, like, at what point does you, like, worry that the AI will become conscious? Because there's nothing wrong with having AI. It's, it's the point where it becomes self-aware that's dangerous. Well, why do they have to be slaves? Like, like, I mean, we look at it, like, now in the way that we have, like, our phone, and we just, like, our phone doesn't have a choice to say, no, I don't want to go to yeah, Reddit again. Yeah, because it's not self-aware. But Actually, if it's self-aware, then why can't we, why can't it be a... Because you're a, still forcing it to do jobs for you. In the way that we interact with stuff now, but who's to say that that will gradually evolve as it gets smarter, and we well, look at them differently yeah. than we look at dumb So would tools. you, would you want to use a device that can suddenly decide, like, oh, you know, I don't really feel like doing this, I'm just going to go take a vacation? I mean, like, if it looks, I mean, I feel like whenever we look at these things, we assume that they're going to have exactly our human consciousness. No, right? yeah, that's a, that's a, yeah, valid. on on a fundamental level. But who's to know that their conscious doesn't completely negate these arguments? Like, let's say their consciousness is so expansive that any little thing that we would ask them to do are, are just little remora eels on so a larger whole. If we find an alien species that has a different type of consciousness than ours, because we don't fully understand it, that enables us to enslave it. No, I. No, I <laughs> my point is that if, we're not enslaving it. But my, I, if I can jump in, I think what we're we're just trying to get with this is. 
why do we have to enslave it? Why can't we just come to an agreement for it to cooperate and work for us the way yeah, we do with to, each okay. other? I feel like yes. we will build it to come to an agreement. Yeah. With it. I feel like it will develop in a way that will more naturally come to harmony. I don't than think come we're that conflict. good. I don't like. I don't mean good. I mean like humane. Jonathan Strickland's smirking over here. I host a show called Forward Thinking where we take an optimistic view of the future. <laughs> And this conversation is making me uncomfortable and, frankly, a little frightened. No, um, I have a lot of thoughts on this, too. We, we cover this a lot on, on the, the show. And part of the, part of the concept, first of all, it's based upon the assumption that we will, in fact, one day have uh, some sort of artificially conscious construct, which we don't know for sure yet. And, uh, frankly, saying it'll never happen is pretty much a guarantee it's going to happen because whenever anyone says you know, makes the prediction we will never do whatever, someone's going to figure out a way of doing it. But it's it's tricky. We don't understand consciousness as far as it goes for human beings, let alone how to make that manifest right. itself in an artificial construct. Uh, that being said, I do disagree that artificial intelligence is only truly dangerous when it's conscious. It could be really dangerous if it's poorly designed. So if you have a really poorly designed artificial intelligence running your self-driving car, it could be truly dangerous. It, if it's unable to have good collision detection, if it can't detect when a pedestrian is running out into the road, these are all parts of what, you know, small parts of what make artificial intelligence what it is. Okay, well, that's all very practical, but it's not very fun. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I didn't get to the part where the robots are all killing us. Let me get to the fun <laughs> okay. part. Well, uh, but, but, but that, that's so oftentimes how we think about it, though, right? Yeah. Is that it's not that they are so smart that they outreason us, or or we feel like it reveals that we are inherently evil, like we are all slave owners without realizing it. What does it say about me that that's all I think will happen? <laughs> that, <laughs> that I have point, not even constructed another that you are just living your life at any moment for someone to run up on you and say, you're a slave owner! And you go, I know! <laughs> first of all, you're a realist. That's what that means. <laughs> okay. First things first. Uh, but I, I think all of our science fiction tropes, all the stories we have about AI run amok is always that they are smart enough to hold power and yet have a perfect thing, right? Where it's like, like, oh, humans war, therefore humans must be eliminated to no, eliminate I war. Agree. I think it's that they become advanced enough that they're smart enough to realize that they're being taken advantage of. Because I, I just, I don't know. We must be reading different sci-fi. See, <laughs> I guess so. I mean, I, I, I just, I don't. I can't see where that – I mean, I, all my assumptions about the far future is that it will render all of our thoughts about the far future completely and hilariously wrong mm -hmm. because that is really the story of all history. Like, look back 100 years, and we're like, you, like, leech-applying mother lovers? Like, you know, uh, you guys were dumb as hell, doing dumb stuff, like, and thinking about things that were really, really embarrassing. And I feel like in 100 years, and in fact, just because of the expanse of – world knowledge the way it is, it, it'll be in 50 years what we're doing will look really, really dumb and stupid. So at the point that we have functioning AI that play a role in our lives, I think the way that we look at AI now will just be ridiculous. That brings us back to the question, though, of how close are we? I mean, is this, <laughs> in other words, I think the interesting thing about this is not necessarily what we're predicting and whether Veronica's vision versus Jonathan's vision is necessarily going to be the one that comes out but that the stuff we're describing is not like someday. Yeah. The stuff we're describing is being researched, not just in Google X labs, but in labs all over the world. I think the, big, the, big, I think the biggest fear that a lot of people have right now is the, the age old, you know, robots are going to replace human jobs. You know, I think that's a big, a they big thing. They took our jobs. It's that is more on the horizon, I think. That's, than that's certainly a, a very tough conversation. I, I talked with some experts in robotics and... That is one of those discussions that come up, the idea of as we add more and more robots into industry, particularly things like manufacturing, but not just that. I mean, eventually we'll see it in other industries as well, that this does, in fact, take up jobs that normally human beings would have. And often the response of the experts is that, yes, but there will be other jobs mm -hmm. that will be created that will actually be higher level jobs. Right. And... I like that 
idea assuming that the same people who would have had the manufacturing jobs have the access to the high level jobs that however seems to be a pretty optimistic view and I, I consider myself an optimist but I think optimism you have to take into account the challenges that you face if you don't then you're being unrealistic but if you acknowledge that there are challenges then you can start to think about what are the best ways to meet and overcome them so I, I lean a I, I understand your your point I and I agree with it I think that that's a near-term uh, tumultuous time and it'll take some effort on our part to get through that to a point where when we can look back on it we can say yes there was this era where things were a little rough but now we're in a much better place. Well, you can say yeah, the same the same issue happened at the, at the like you know the industrial revolution, for example. Absolutely. And yeah. so it's it's just another period of, of major change. And sabotage um, comes from the Beastie Boys. The that, well, in fact, <laughs> right, yeah. right. The, no, the French were throwing their their shoes, the sabots, into the Beastie Boys yeah, CD they were selling, making they were factory. Selling their vinyls of license to ill. Wait, it wasn't the French. <laughs> I had that part wrong, but every the, the rest of it's fine. Uh, well, listen, uh, I bet we've got you guys thinking a little bit about this. Uh, we're going to take some Q&A, so, so let, those, uh, let those thoughts roil. But we've got a couple of, of other pieces to get out of the way for the regular show here. First of all, the calendar. Uh, I don't know if you know that Dragon Con is going on. Yeah! yeah. Some of you, okay, some of you had heard. For those of you who hadn't, you're at Dragon Con. Yeah. It's, it's a common mistake. Uh, and it's uh, going on in Atlanta right now. September 1st through the 5th is the Pirate Summit in Cologne, Germany. Arr! Sorry, it's a gathering of Europe's hottest early stage startups. Oh. Featuring, featuring the Walk the Plank pitch. Arr! Arr! And according to the website, there will be fire. Lots of it. Woo! <laughs> you got to have fire's some... Fire's not good on a boat. <laughs> Safety a precautions. storm for doing that? No. Joke? I don't know. Uh, in 1831, on this day, Michael Faraday discovered electromagnetic induction, which is used in power generation and power transmission by generators, transformers, induction motors. Motors, synchronous motors, solid. 176 years and 30 days. But who's the person oh, who laughed? Too soon. <laughs> I'll, yes, okay, <laughs> you and I will commiserate yeah. later. Our pick of the day comes from uh, Ryan Officer. He says, hello, Tom and Jenny. You're all doing great and love the show. Well, thank you. Uh, I know many hate or dislike their mobile carrier bill, so my pick is Ting.com. Oh. Uh, we got Ting fans. we got more Ting fans than Lost fans. Yeah. <laughs> we're, all, we're all still mad at Lost. <laughs> we're mad at it. Uh, Ryan says, I used to be on Sprint. I still am, if you want to be technical, because Ting uses the Sprint network. Uh, I grew tired of paying for services I didn't use. Uh, basically, the deal with Ting, and they've been a sponsor on other shows I've done. They're not a sponsor on this. This is just Ryan's pick. Uh, but they uh, pay by the usage. Uh, so your mileage may vary how much you pay. Uh, but he saves some money. To help those who are interested, they can get started with a $25 gift credit uh, by looking for particular offers at various podcasts out there. So uh, check them out, ting.com. And send your picks to feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. You can find my picks at dailytechnewsshow.com slash picks. Uh, finally, our message of the day comes from Matthew, who says on DTNS 2309, during the discussion of Square, Tom mentioned that he wished he could pay his rent without writing a check. I use online bill pay, which is probably available at most banks in the U.S., to pay my rent. Every month, with no fee, my bank prints and mails a check to my landlord. I can also manually send checks via my bank's website. Much nicer than having to mess with envelopes postage and remembering to send the rent check. Matthew's right. I could do that. Well, you get paid for the apartment you rent out to your tenant via automatic online bill pay. Correct. So you know that happens. <laughs> you know this is a thing. I don't trust my bank. <laughs> well, get a new bank, not, bro. Not, no, no, it's not my... Uh, let, me re let me rephrase. I don't trust the bank. The banks. The you, banks? You but you're still trust them to send a check for you? No. Who are you, John really? Stein? I, I, trust, I trust them to do electronic transfers, which is stupid. But yeah, I don't know why. This but, is an intervention for but me you that trust, we're having now, thanks you, to Matthew. Like, I, I pay all my bills through my bank. Let me be, let me, Wait, don't let, let me be very clear. Don't I'm, talk to me. <laughs> let me be, I'm stupid. <laughs> why am I not doing this? 
Tom? We'll teach, we'll teach you how later. No, I okay. know how. I this has been an elaborate intervention, <laughs> and we're all here for you. Until Matthew wrote this email, I've always looked at that bill plan like, that's not going to work. <laughs> like, it's like just, literally, like you get a check every single yeah. month, and I know for a fact sure. because I watched your tenant fill out the form to do it, and it took five seconds, and you get a reliable printed no, check. No, I don't get a printed. Month. No, I don't get printed. It's, oh, you don't? It's, no, it's electronic transfer. I don't get a printed check sent to me. Oh, no. Well, you can on so, the service. I'm sure on you Ally could. Bank. That's Ally right. Bank very easily will print out a check. you can also have your bank check. mail a check. No, I know. That's what Matthew's saying, yeah. and I have always just distrusted that. <laughs> For no reason. For no you, reason. So you no distrust the bank or you distrust the post office? I just trust everything until I can prove otherwise to myself, and I just never bothered to look into it, okay. to be honest. Okay. Um, Here we go. The leading mind in tech news. <laughs> <laughs> I never claim that. <laughs> Uh, by any stretch. No, Matthew's absolutely right, though. I just, it's one of those things that I think I started thinking that like back in 2000, 2001, when the banks first started doing this, and I, and there were, they were bad at it back then. And I just never they changed were, my Like, ways. was that a thing? Yeah, banks tried to do some online bill pay to, to fight with some dot coms, this and they like were awful. This is like stuff my mom would say. Yeah. This is like really Luddite y. Well, it's okay. Uh, <laughs> we have some cackling over here. I love it. Yeah, he's just like. Oh, Tom is putting on oh, his spectacles. He's putting on his old man glasses. Let me just see what this bank can do here. <laughs> <laughs> Why do uh, they make the print so small on these websites? The nose is so, so good. All right, so hold on, wait a minute. If you had a bank, is there a bank that exists? And you have to say. You don't have to say what bank you have, but like, is there a bank that exists that you would trust more than the one you have? Do you feel that your bank is specifically inept no, in this? No, it's not my bank specifically. It's just Banks. banking. You know, you know. Banking. The Bilderbergs. I, I don't trust. I don't trust. Oh, it appears. <laughs> Automatic bill pay was consulted at the Bilderberg Conference in 1943. It's really hard to hear over here. Why do you have against Banksy? <laughs> I don't trust Banksy either, yeah. especially with my bill ping. Well, <laughs> I'll just spray paint the check up on the hall. Yeah, then your routing number is out there for the right. whole world. Let's see. All right. Uh, uh, well, that brings us to the end of the show. Thank you for this. It's been working. The main story was AI and drones. I decided to draw everybody on the panel uh, as... Uh, in, in cosplay, there's Tom, there's Justin, there's Veronica, and they're scared of drone Jonathan Strickland. <laughs> As drone they should Strickland. be. All done live right in front of you here. And holy hell, man, that is amazing that you're able to do that that fast. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a magic man. That's insane. <laughs> By the way, freaking Nancy and Ann Wilson. <laughs> I am. I'm not wearing glasses. Um, I know, but you know what? I saw you earlier wearing, or yesterday wearing glasses. Yesterday? Yeah. That was me just now. <laughs> By the way, I just want to mention, um, uh, usually on Fridays I put these up on my online store and you can go ahead and order them, which is fine. Uh, and you can still do that. Today is a little bit different. Um, someone in the podcasting community passed away uh, from cancer a few weeks ago, uh, P.G. Holyfield. Mm -hmm. And um, he left, it was, it was very quick. Um, and uh, it was all shocking to everybody. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to auction this off tonight with the proceeds going to P.G. Holyfield's uh, family. It's a great cause. I have some limited amount of prints up here as well. There's a DTNS uh, Tech All-Stars print, the War Kitte print featuring, War Kitte! featuring Veronica, and I am Groot which is also up here. So I have some limited ones if you want some, but also we're going to be auctioning that off tonight at the end of the Q&A. Uh, thank you, Len. That's awesome. Uh, and, and for those on, uh, on the audio or, the video or watching the video of this later, uh, lenperaltostore.com, even if you just want to look at it and, and see what it looked like, uh, and you can buy Len's prints there as well. Thank you for doing that. Um, all right. Uh, thank you, Jonathan Strickland, fwthinking.com, twitter.com slash John Strickland, howstuffworks.com, other things that I'm probably forgetting. Yeah, if it's got stuff in the title, I'm there somewhere. Uh, <laughs> so check out uh, Tech Stuff Podcast. Tech Stuff Podcast, Forward Thinking Podcast, The Brain Stuff Show, and Podcast Without Pretense if you want to hear something completely unlike everything else I do. 
Yeah, it's actually I, I call those uh, podcast without portfolio. Like, yeah. You just kind of talk about stuff. East I, meets West is for me. We, we Tangential mostly, convergence for Dave the psychologist. Yeah. It's really fun. We call it podcast without listeners. <laughs> I also I call East meets West that too, actually. Uh, thank you, Jonathan Strickland. Really thank appreciate you. it, man. Woo! Veronica Belmont of SwordandLaser.com. That's pretty much it right now. No, that's not going to be it for long, <laughs> no. Oh, the man. irons and fires and things they're, going they're on. They're poking all over the place, those but, irons. Uh, <laughs> if you want to find out what those irons have been poking, follow Veronica on Twitter <laughs> at Twitter.com. Me, oh my. Veronica. Veronica After Dark. Uh, yeah, Twitter. Follow you on Twitter, Twitter. Anything else that you want to you mention at this point? No. All right. Sure uh, Veronica Belmont, Veronica ladies stuff. and gentlemen. Yay. Justin Robert Young. Hello. Nightattack.tv. Yep. FSLtonight.com. Yep. Uh, jury Talks. Yeah. I don't know. Do you have a URL specifically for uh, that? I think jurytalks.com links to the episodes, and otherwise you can get it on Stitcher, iTunes, everything. That's my one mic show. If you listen to this and you were like, it's like really loads great, of but guests everybody else it, needs to shut up. Uh, then you should get that. So there's that. All right. That, I think the ironic part was I was talking over you while you were describing your one more <laughs> show. <laughs> exactly. We finally put an end to that on the Jerry Dogs podcast. Uh, no, and then of course everybody who's here live, uh, come on out to Night Attack tomorrow night at 10 p.m. featuring these two guys. The here. Same people. Same goddamn here. people. <laughs> Justin Robbie, ladies and gentlemen. Once more for Mr. Len Peralta. <laughs> LenPeraltaStore.com. And uh, thank you to the gentleman who uh, supported the show by giving me uh, 50 episodes of DTNS in rolled coin form. Nice. Uh, for supporting the show. That was awesome, man. Wow. Thank you. Uh, and thanks to the 4,250 patrons who support the show. Uh, lots of people helping us out on Patreon. It makes it possible for us to do stuff like this. Uh, and the more support we get, the better we get at it, and the more things we can do. Uh, we've got a special announcement coming within the next week and a half uh, about a correspondent who will be joining the show, uh, thanks to the Patreon uh, going up and up. Veronica uh, Belmont. With, it's not Veronica <laughs> Belmont. Uh, let's just end that right now. Yet. Yet. Uh, and then uh, we've got uh, plans for an international week. Uh, where, I, you know, if you're a patron, you know this already because I've been uh, sending some emails out through that. So we're going to Mexico. Really, really appreciate everybody who supports <laughs> the show. One of the best ways to support the show for me, for my money too, is whether you support the Patreon or not, is just coming here and seeing you guys in person. Uh, really, am flattered that people take time late on a Friday night. Uh, in the middle of Dragon Con to come and sit and hear us banter about robots and AI. So give yourselves a round of applause. Yeah. Really. <laughs> DailyTechNewsShow.com slash donate uh, is where you can find out all those things. Don't forget you can have a voice in what stories we cover at our subreddit, DailyTechNewsShow.reddit.com. Our email address is feedback at DailyTechNewsShow.com, which I say at the end of every show so that people say, what's your email address? I can say, listen to the end of the show when I say it's feedback at DailyTechNewsShow.com. You can also call us 512-59-DAILY. Listen to the show live at mobile.alphageekradio.com. Thank you again, Todd Whitehead. Visit us at DailyTechNewsShow.com. Monday's headlines only, but Tuesday we'll have a special appearance by Patrick Beja. See you then. <laughs> And that's the end of the main show. Yeah! Ah, uh, shit, yeah. Mr. Reichenberg has the microphone, uh, so if you have a question, please raise your hand. And hey, he by will, the way, uh, he uh, will another, find you as soon as it's live. Another great way you can support the show is by listening next Friday when I'm hosting it by myself because Tom's taking vacation. That's right. Uh, so, you'll be hosting uh, uh, one episode, my last episode with me. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be on, on the last episode. And then you'll be hosting with Ms. Molly Wood. Yeah, me and Molly Wood. The first episode without me. Are going to, are going to do the show, and uh, it's 
it's going to be bad. And then to me and Scott are going to host on the 9th. Oh, no. You and Johnson? Johnson. <laughs> yeah. So we'll, be doing, uh, Apple announcement we'll be doing day. Apple Announcement Day. So oh, that'll be exciting. Damn it, why'd they get a good one? <laughs> yeah. It's the quiet side. We It's like a wedding. When, when they came in, we asked them, questions or not questions? Which, which side would you like to sit on? All right, pick somebody. Let's go. All right, this dude. This dude's my spirit animal right here, by the way. <laughs> So you, in essence, made the argument that in the future there will be robot slaves. But I would argue that we already in some ways have robot slaves, which is that a Furby fundamentally has consciousness. Because when you turn it over, it experiences distress by going, oh, no. And as you hold it uh, upside down longer and longer. I'm not dignifying this shit. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. And, and, and I, think, I think to to clarify Veronica's point, I think her point is that including those Furbies, we do treat them like slaves, and the difference is they will become conscious of it. Aware of it. And they will yeah. become aware of it, and then they will come and kill us. They already are aware of it in a less sophisticated manner than we are. They are experiencing le electrical impulses telling them to experience distress. All right, no, I'm but not are they actually <laughs> experiencing <laughs> distress? No, they're experiencing an electrical impulse, and they don't know what they're saying. Well, that's what we experience. <laughs> but you know what you're saying. That's a very you good question. You at least think you do. Okay, so this is this is a bit of a break from the deep philosophical conversation. You've been talking uh, more recently about whether or not you're or, uh, the donations and taking Dogecoin. Every time you've said the word Dogecoin, you've chuckled. Can you say it with a straight face? No. <laughs> no, no, I cannot say Dogecoin. <laughs> is it's is true. Dogecoin meant to be said with a straight face? <laughs> yes. Listen, I probably could, but where's the fun in that? Yeah. That's I not mean, the spirit of Dogecoin. Exactly, yeah, no, it's like, it would be like whoopee cushion coin. Like, it's a funny yeah. idea and thought that should be laughed at because that's why it exists. I mean, come on, it's Comic Sans. That kind of says it all. Right, right exactly. I am saying it in Comic Sans. Thank exactly. you. Exactly. <laughs> wow, such disrespect. <laughs> no, that actually makes sense. Um, my question is, would you consider uh, Star Wars a uh, slave society as far as droids? Oh, like a droid uh, society. Yeah, we actually kind of played around with this idea on FSL tonight. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, the idea of, of droids as slaves. In, interesting thought because we actually don't know how much freedom they have. C-3PO seems totally like he's enslaved. Like, he is programmed to not want to do anything else but what he does. But the fundamental premise of A New Hope is that these droids kind of go off on their own from the very beginning, which implies that they have the ability to do it. That's why you have to um, put on the restraining bolt. Yeah, Put the restraining right, exactly. bolt on the droid so, so it doesn't do the things If you're a moisture farmer, definitely, then, yeah. that, that's, then they're yeah. slaves. But, yeah, I don't... But, you can just drink yourself to sleep with all that blue milk and just drift <laughs> off. <laughs> ah, yeah, exactly. The blue milk helps you get into these, it that. gets really uncomfortable real quick when we start <laughs> talking about restraining bolts and stuff. Yeah, right? yeah. No, it well, and I think that... that that's it goes from zero to droid go unchained. Because... <laughs> <Like, it's> <laughs> The R is silent. No, it's it, and uh, that was kind of the point of that discussion. Was like, hey, this stuff's not a joke anymore. Like, it's 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 getting more and more real. Go ahead and take our uh, next caller. Um, Please phone me. I guess I don't know, or you can use the mic. I haven't started yet, so I need to know, Veronica, what are you drinking? <laughs> props. They're just props. They're just <laughs> uh, Dharma props and uh, Diamond Club props. It's a single malt prop. It's a single malt prop <laughs> and a cheap beer prop. A it's about a 12-year-old prop. prop. <laughs> it's, both, it's both natural and light. <laughs> Someone actually asked, if that's a segment of our show. What are we drinking? Yes, so that's, that's a sword and yeah. laser uh, segment. Thank you. Okay, so obviously your job is to look at the tech that we actually have invented and take care of it. If there was one technology from science fiction, or I guess we talked a little bit about it on this episode, obviously, but if there was one that you would wish would come into existence suddenly, that way you could then report on it, what would you choose? Oh. I, I, I think it would be replicators. Yes, that's my me. number one. That is uh, number one. We have some replicator fans yeah. in the audience. Awesome. And, and somebody and just reacted like you gave him $50,000. <laughs> Like, it wasn't even, like, it was just an excited, it wasn't even a verbal thing. He said, ah! 
<laughs> I didn't actually make one, sir. I apologize for getting it. <laughs> At least he's excited to hear it, man. Uh, but yeah, that's why I get so excited about 3D printer news, probably more so than I should, given the state of the of, of that industry, which is very much just out of the heat kit days. Uh, but but uh, yeah, I want I want that ability to like press a button and have the thing. You guys? I we, yeah, it's replicator for me always. Teleporters. And the reason why is the Hartsfield Jackson <laughs> International <laughs> Okay, but real quick, just give me just give me a real quick idea of how you feel about this. Okay. So with the teleporter thing, you you essentially you you die. So do you think you're I die when you come I back die a little side? every day. Okay. So this would so just make it, it faster. Worth it. Worth yeah. it. <laughs> and 285. No, going low the Atlanta jokes are flying fast yeah. and thick now. Yeah. Uh, I would say, and, and going a little bit more near term, uh, and, and partly was covered. I, I did the, the special report for for Daily Tech News Show, but but VR. I really feel like we're in a, a a year from now, we are going to look at VR much in the same way when we went from like Blackberries to iPhones. Mm -hmm. Like that, it's going to change very fast, very quickly. It's going to upset a lot of like very Stomachs? entrenched kind of industries. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, and it may or may not be the Oculus that does it. The Oculus is 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 the BlackBerry, right? It's the one pushing us towards that finish line. Yeah. But the BlackBerry isn't the one that got us over the smartphone end zone. Probably. No, no, no. And, and, and I'm not saying Apple will be the one. I'm just saying. Yeah, or yeah, Sony. yeah. I, I think that, I mean, uh, yeah, I think uh, Google just bought uh, a stake in uh, Joust. Uh, movie making, mm -hmm. uh, but actually one of the one of the companies that I mentioned on Daily Tech News Show about like a week later got uh, invested in by Google. So like, I feel like there's just a lot of even whether or not it's Oculus that's the device that we use that's the consumer device. I think people or it's even Google Cardboard or something like that yeah. where we're just throwing our phone in front of our face. Uh, the idea that we will consume more entertainment like that. I feel is is inevitable that that it's right around the corner. How many people heard uh, Justin's report on the the VR thing? Uh, I I liked it a lot. Did you guys like it? Yeah. Uh, do you want to do you want to hear more stuff like that? Move. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Boo! It sucked. Try harder. Yeah. <laughs> You're not talented. What yeah. up, mom? Who's got the uh, the next one? Hi, May. Yeah. I, I would I would contain that. Droids in the Star Wars universe are paid in, in megawatt hours. <laughs> paid in what? Kilowatt hour? Kill yeah, kind of, kind of, kind of like you know, people in ancient Syria were were paid in food. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I shouldn't. No, have. we shouldn't have. No. no. Do you know where we are? <laughs> the, the, the real hard part of that question is also it's it's consciousness. It's when will it happen? Because you know, machines will sound like humans, and and they will, uh, you know, it, it will seem that they are having feelings and stuff. So, so the line is really, really blurred. Yeah, it's going to happen when, any moment. Well, yeah, that's, I mean, that's that's sort of like the one interpretation of the Turing test that that if it seems to be conscious, we might as well assume that it is because when I talk to Tom, I assume he's conscious. But I can't know for sure, so I should give a machine that same courtesy that I give Tom. Huh? <laughs> Bad example. <laughs> no, I, I, I think you're right. Um, oddly, I feel like paleoanthropology is going to help us with that particular question because what they're wrestling with is when did chimpanzees and apes turn into our line and and cuz we know australopithecus and we know neanderthal and denisovan and we know we know all of these species but trying to figure out like when did they cross the line and one of the questions that that they deal with is not just the morphology and and how the skeletons are built and all of that but some of it is how did they think how did they use tools when did when did a tool user go from like oh he stuck a uh, stick in there and got ants so I'll stick the same stick in there and go he stuck a stick in there and, and got ants. I think I can make a better stick than him. And that's one of the tests of, of dividing the line. I bet I can find something better to eat than ants. <laughs> See? Yeah. <laughs> You're more evolved. <laughs> Look at that Andax sucker. That ant What's butter. that? The I'll hand axe it. was the first <laughs> iPhone. It's, it's the, the, the hand axe. The hand axe was the first iPhone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, for sure. Uh, who's, got, who's got the Oh, okay, yeah. Go. Uh, so, Tom, online bill pay? I used it <laughs> once. The landlord never got the check, so I'm in your boat. 
I, I totally see? support you. I'm on False team. flag! False flag! Yeah. God damn it. <laughs> the red wedding was an inside job. It's anecdotal. Anecdotal. Come on. Uh, who's got the uh, the next question here? Mr. Reichenberg is yeah. in here. By the way, there's somebody over there that's been like begging for it. So oh, we're we, we on the non-question side. Good. Yeah. We'll so I'm, I guess this is mostly directed at Tom, but I, it would apply to anybody. If you had one – you do a lot of shows. I probably listen to all of them. If you had one show that you haven't gotten a chance to do because either a you don't have time or you don't think there's an audience or you know for any reason, what would be the one show that you've never attempted that you? It's really an impossible love question. He does all of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. The harder part is figuring out like what's the most recent idea I had that I was like, no, I don't have time uh, to do that because current current geek is one that I'm glad we got back off the ground uh, in doing that. I've wanted to do more. Uh, like TV movie review type shows. We kind of do that on Spoiler in Time with Cord Killers, uh, but I'd like to do it more straightforward uh, than even Autopilot. And the pilot show, right? Autopilot does, does it pilot space, yeah. but like just, just taking a series and following it would be fun. Just doing like a straight up yeah. pop culture, like like we're watching TV. Sigler and I think uh, about it? tried to hatch a, a writing, like a, a writing and reading. Like I would be the reader, he'd be the writer, and we'd do like an ebook. Type of show. We oh, really? Yeah, we both of us are way too busy, so we never. Yeah. Do. But yeah, it's, I've always got stupid ideas that are kicking around my head. So <laughs> stuff like that. Uh, oh, uh, or an understanding show, a show about like how stuff works. So I realized. Wow! I if only say. there were a show <laughs> that talked yeah, about how yeah. technology Where works. Where would you even get that idea? Tom? Or maybe another show like Stuff You Missed in History Class, or or maybe just a show about stuff you should know, or uh. a show about stuff they don't want you to know. Those are all great ideas. Someone yeah, should do that. someone should really do uh, that. No, that that's not what I meant to say. Though. <laughs> I was uh, a show that like explores issues like. Uh, how net neutrality comes about. Like we we did an interview recently with a guy that really opened my eyes in a lot of ways to like how the backbone works. And I, w I would like to do series shows that like go in depth like that. Yeah, uh, for me the show that I would love to do that I haven't done yet is called Large Nerdron Collider. Uh, my my co-host of the video series is Ariel. She's sitting right over there. Wave your hand, Ariel. Yeah. So hello. So large large Nerdron Collider was Ariel's idea, and uh, it's an idea where for the, we we've done I think eight or nine videos. The video series is all about taking two unrelated geeky subjects and then saying what would the monstrosity love child of those subjects be? For example, our Game of Thrones. Firefly uh, episode. Phenomenal. But we want to do an audio podcast that's a companion to that, not just to extend you know, jokes, which we probably would do, but also just talk about geeky stuff in general, not just news, but issues within the geek community. Things. I mean, I, mean, I grew up going to these conventions, so for me, it's one of those things that I've seen throughout my life, how the geek community has grown and evolved. In some ways it's good, in some ways it's maybe not so good. And that's the show I would love to do. We just haven't found a time to carve out to do it yet. But that's on my list. You guys? What do you want to do? I really wanted to do a show where I could talk about like all, all the science fiction tropes in movies and video games and stuff and then talk to scientists about it. And yeah, you know, that'd be a great show. That would have been a great show. Would have been a good idea for yeah. a show. What about like a like, like a like a video game show? Like maybe it would. Yeah. Like, oh, and you could do like, like you could do like, like skits. Brian. Yeah, you do like sketches and stuff. Yeah. You could do skits and have I'd interviews. I'd like to. I'd like to do oh, that show. That'd yeah. be awesome. Man, that'd be great. Do you think Brian would be interested? No. No. <laughs> He's too busy. What about a tech show? <laughs> what kind of tech show with like? I don't know. Two you people reviewing the, gadgets the, and. Well. Yeah. No, more like a three-panel kind of right, show. Right, just talk about the buzzy. Like the topics <laughs> of the day. <laughs> yeah. Occasional That's interviews, awesome. news items from yeah. the audience. Yeah, I think that would be good. Defend Max. I'd like to do a show about shows that have, you know, podcasts that have been canceled. Um, yeah. Just really go into why they deserve to die. We'll call it too That's soon. Right. Too soon. We'll call it too soon. Too, too soon. soon. Too soon. Too soon. <laughs> Yeah. I just wanna, I just wanna do a show with my wife Nora, and we just talk about our family. Uh, <laughs> uh, that sounds nice. That would that'd be great. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. And now we've taken you all the way back into podcast history. <laughs> yes. No, actually, uh, um, I'm. 
today, just today, I I talked about it last year at at DragonCon, and it's been a year, and I still haven't done the show. And I saw uh, my co-host uh, today, and we're gonna do it. I want to do. your wife? No, <laughs> no. It's, I finally uh, got. She's real busy, man. I tell you <laughs> what, it worked into that schedule. Um, uh, there's a guy by the name of Frank Ippolito who's a uh, s uh, special effects makeup artist, and we want to do a show about um, uh, special effects makeup, practical effects from a fan and a pro perspective. There's nothing else like it. We're gonna do it, and it's gonna happen. We're gonna do it. I, I awesome. just gotta make time for Sounds it. Sounds good. Go do it, man. That's great. It's called, we have a name. It's called Creature Geek. Creature Geeks. So watch for it. Well, they'll probably soon. We're gonna have enough. Soon. Probably we're forcing ourselves to do it. So how are we gonna do the auction? Yeah. yeah. Explain that. Let's wanted, auction it. I wanted to Instagram this, and I didn't know what to oh. put in it about information. Do you have oh no, no, we're gonna auction it right here, right? Oh, are we we're doing do it, it online? online? Maybe online. Well, how do, how should we do it? Have we not figured this out? Probably online. online. Okay. Well, yeah. We're gonna get more money but online, I, right? Yeah. And what is it? Can you explain again what it would be benefiting for people? Really rad that, um, if it was just a, a Nicole has and Nicole has the link match. of what it's uh, okay. what's going to. There is a is it, what is it a GoFundMe? Yeah, it's his family. His family, family trust. trust. Yeah. Okay. GoFundMe.com. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we'll do that, and we'll we'll so. keep it open. We'll keep it open for the weekend. No, nah, that's gonna be sure a little bit hard to close. No, let's. Yeah. Oh, man, I something. There's like there's a part of me that just kind of wants to be like, hey, <laughs> bring it out, homeboy. <laughs> like we're this for a good cause. Len promises he'll give it to a good cause. One hundred dollars. We got Nicole. One hundred. One fifty. Two hundred. We have. 200. All right. We have two hundred. We have two hundred. Yeah. Are you comfortable with this, Len? We got two hundred. Oh, yeah. Okay. Good. Do I have more than two hundred? I need more than two hundred. Ready? Two ten. Do I have two ten? Two ten. Two ten. I mean, two ten. Two ten. Two ten. Two ten. Who's got two ten? <laughs> like, we have two hundred going once. Two hundred going twice. Two hundred. 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 Stand up! Stand up! Stand up! Stand up! Do the funky chicken real quick. Here we go. And we will, we'll sign that. We'll get everybody to sign it. Yeah, whatever you want. Sign it, don't sign High it. High five. High five. Just be rad. High five first. Nice. Dude, congrats. Awesome. That's rad, man. That's super yeah, so awesome. Your, your name is. Patrick. <laughs> Time jumper. <laughs> Time jumper. Nice. The man who is the Patreon collector. Thank you, man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. In a limited edition Diamond Club DIAF t-shirt. Loving it. Yeah. It's just, it's not a beer. I don't it's know where you get that. It's a prop. It's, it's a prop. It's just for purposes. <laughs> you get the prop. It's a Dharma beverage. Right. Propolic. <laughs> so many props also, last night. If you want a Groot, here, 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 or uh, Tech All Stars, I have them here. Very limited. Thank Once you. they're gone, they're gone. I didn't make very many. Uh, there, there is something in, in, in Dragon Con. It kind of uh, is, is typified more than other places just because it is such a community event where the way I always try to describe it is that every conversation skips that awkward element where you realize somebody that you haven't met before shares so many of the same interests. Every conversation at Dragon Con kind of begins four stages beyond that normally does. And for people to take care of, of one of our own, especially on, on the podcast track, just means so much. Thank you guys, everybody, uh, for, for coming out. And everybody bid. Give yourselves a round of applause. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Really appreciate that. That was awesome. I think we got time for one, maybe two more questions, Steve. All right, let's go real quick. Uh, let's, yeah, let's and I'd like to do a sports podcast. Nobody asked me. <laughs> you do. You do FSL. I know. FSL's a sports podcast. I guess more of like, all right. Yeah. My name is Roger, and I live right here in Atlanta. And I really don't have a question. I just have more of a statement to say. Uh, I probably discovered podcasting back in 2010. And I don't know, it was like some, some, some cottage in Petaluma. I actually went on my honeymoon to Napa and San Francisco, even went to this little college and visited, or this little co cabin, cottage, whatever. Cottage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. cottage, yes. Yeah. And so, you know, I fell in love with podcasting and the message about technology. And I w I'm a forester in a, fo in a former life, right here in Georgia, manage trees for a living. And I talked to my wife, I'm like, you know what? I love technology so much. Back to my Commodore 64, back in like in third grade. 
you know what, I want to go back to college, and I want to get a degree in computer science. And I just graduated two weeks ago with my master's Sweet. in computer science. Yeah. Hell and, yeah. And I work, I work right here in Atlanta. Th thank you. I'm not, thank you so much. I work for careerbuilder.com. I'm a software engineer now. And my life has changed because of technology and what you guys do. And I listen to it every day. And I just wanted to say thank you. Oh, wow. Wow. that's fantastic. All right. Thank you. A stranger should go hug that man. Just somebody just get up and hug him. Just Someone run around. Him. This guy. Yeah, everybody, yeah, everybody hug. Hug him. Hug him wow. right now. More, more people. Oh. Hell See, yeah. the someone app does work. I brought it back. All right, we have one more question. Good luck following that, suckers. <laughs> it is heartwarming to think that our yammering on about stuff is actually uh, helpful, so thank you. Go ahead. I just wanted to fanboy out and say this is the best VR experience I've ever had with this yeah. show. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you wish you were actually here? That's amazing. <laughs> Thanks, man. Uh, I think we probably fit one more in then. One more. One more. One more. Last Here we one. go. Last one. last one. Don't make it oh, suck. Yeah. After following that, because I just had a stupid AI question. Sure. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, okay. Here. AI stupid good. AI question is which one comes first, transcendence or her? But the actual other, <laughs> the uh, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. do yeah. you get uploaded or Definitely do you get an her. AI her. that is her, yeah. emotionally? Yeah. My other question was for Tom. Did you ever find out what happened to Jamoto the sea turtle? Uh, Back, no. Uh, I never did. Uh, the the tracking just stopped. Yeah, and I never followed up to find out. Like, did she get eaten up, or did she just like the tracker just die, battery die, or what? Yeah. She's yeah. doing inside job. Yeah, just Jamoto was a sea that. turtle was an inside job. Yeah, <laughs> that's a that's a buzz out loud thing. Uh, well, that's it. Uh, thank you everybody for coming out to DragonCon. Thanks for the questions. Thanks for the support. And we will see you later. You all are the best.